Hello, my reading friends. It's Ani. I am so happy you came to see me. If you like reading stories with me, be sure to subscribe. Okay, today I'm sending shout outs to Jareen and Jilly in British Columbia, Canada, Anzia and Elise in the Philippines, Byron and Solomon in California, Harrison and Weatherly in South Carolina, as well as Vivian and Juliet in Williamsburg, Virginia. Hello, everyone. I just love being able to read with you. Are you ready for a story? Well, in this book, we'll meet a little tomato whose life isn't going the way she planned at all. Let's find out why as we read The Not-So-Red Ripe Brown Tomato. If you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. The Not-So-Red Ripe Brown Tomato by Brian R. Wilson Illustrated by David Nass Behind the farmhouse, but not so far out as the cornfield, there grew a big, bushy tomato plant. This tomato plant was cared for and loved with just the right amount of sun and water by an old farmer. In return, the tomato plant gave the farmer all the tomatoes his family could possibly eat. These tomatoes were some of the biggest, reddest, roundest, juiciest, and sweetest tomatoes anyone had ever seen or tasted. To keep his plant happy and healthy, the farmer picked off the bugs, trimmed the dead leaves, and even brushed the dirt off the biggest and reddest of the tomatoes before he picked them. Down low on the plant, a small, not-so-red and not-so-round tomato lay hidden from the bright sunlight. She saw the other tomatoes above her that were so gorgeous, and she saw how the farmer adored them and treated them and even took them away with a big smile on his face. The little tomato wanted nothing more than to be one of them. So she tried her best to grow. She tried to get out into the sun where she might turn red, but she was too low on the tomato plant. She tried to get fresh water, but the bigger, redder tomatoes always got it before her. Some of them even gave her dirty looks as the farmer picked them and carried them away. This made the small tomato very sad. Time passed, and the days grew shorter and colder. The small tomato had become lumpy and brown. All the other tomatoes had been picked by the farmer. Sad and alone, the little tomato fell off the bush and rolled out into the sun. She thought surely the farmer would see her now, but the farmer didn't come back for several days. When things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, the farmer's dog came by, took a bite out of that poor tomato, and then buried her in a hole. But this story is not over. Early the next spring, the farmer came outside and saw something new. There was a new little tomato plant growing in his garden. This brought a huge smile to his face because his old plant, the one he loved so much, had died in the winter. Now he looked forward to see what beautiful tomatoes this plant would give him. When the warmth of spring came, the small, not-so-red, not-so-round tomato woke up. She quickly realized she was no longer a lumpy brown tomato, but the green sprout of a new tomato plant. When she looked up, she saw the farmer looking down on her with a smile. It was the same look she had seen and wished for the year before. Soon it became clear what that small tomato, no, that tomato plant, was supposed to do with her life. And it was much, much bigger than she could have ever dreamed. The truth is that life is tough sometimes. And no matter how badly you may want something, or even how hard you try, it may not be God's plan for you. Often, God has much bigger plans for you. 
There have been many times in my life where things didn't turn out the way I'd hoped they would, but then later on I realized they turned out much better. I've learned to trust that God has a better plan than I do. I hope you enjoyed our story today. See you next time.